One of the most interesting campaigns in many years is this year's contest for the Republican U.S. Senate nomination. It's a campaign that features businessman Jack McMullen and retired dairy farmer Fred Tuttle running as a protest candidate. Tonight we'll hear from both candidates and we'll be encouraging your phone calls during the program. Production of Switchboard is made possible by a major grant from the Lintelac Foundation. And in just a little while, we'll be taking your phone calls. I'd like to thank Long Distance by Cellular One for making these important services available. If you'd like to write the number down, it's 1-800-639-2211. That's 1-800-639-2211. And we'll be opening the phone lines in just a few moments. The candidates seeking the Republican U.S. Senate nomination are businessman Jack McMullen and retired dairy farmer Fred Tuttle. I'd like to welcome both of you to Switchboard this evening. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Bob. Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you. Let's run through the format that we're using tonight and for all of our candidate debates this year. During the first part of the program, candidates will have the opportunity to ask each other questions. The question should be no longer than a minute in length and the answer no longer than two minutes. And a brief follow-up question is allowed with a one-minute response. The second half of the program will feature calls from listeners... Answers should be limited to one minute, and all candidates will have the opportunity to respond to a caller's question. And the program will conclude with a one-minute closing statement from each candidate. So we're going to start our first round of questions tonight with Fred Tuttle. Fred, have you got a question for Jack McMullen? Yes, I, I think i got one here. Uh, Jack, uh, let's start off easy. What's a tether? I have no idea. You have no idea? It's a hay tether. Have it throws the hay up so you can get it dry. Uh, what's Rowan? Rowan. Excuse me? Rowan? Rowan, yeah. R-O-W-R-E-N. It's a it's, uh, second cut in the hay. You have to stir it up several times and cock it up sometimes, and you have to get it good and dry, and then that goes in as cows for the cows to eat in the winter. Second cut is good. Well, I'm learning something here tonight. Yeah, uh, sure. Jack McMullen, have you got a question for Fred Tuttle? Yes, Fred. In our last uh, conversation, you mentioned that uh, people are having a hard time making ends meet. And I'm wondering um, if you think lower taxes might be a way of helping them have more take-home pay. Oh, I'd like to see lower taxes and more take-home pay. Uh, I'd like to see the poor people have a better chance some way. Uh, whether somebody, a senator, maybe can't do that because it's so complicated to get this money straight in the state now. So. Uh, the money seems to be going to the rich instead of the poor. I don't really understand that, but uh, the poor people need money too, Jack. Yes, uh, I agree. Uh, how would you uh, propose to to bring some of that money to the middle class and the poor people? I really don't know. Uh, not unless they could uh, change the taxes around a little bit so that the poor could get more tax break. Yeah. So we'll have another question from Fred Tuttle for Jack McMullen. Let's set this one here. Your, your second question, yeah. Jack, can you read these uh, Vermont towns? Sure. Montpelier, Berlin, Barry, Charlotte, Dover, Calais. What? What was that one? Calais. Callis, Callis, yeah, maybe, I, I, nobody can pronounce that right. Okay, Jack. Uh, uh, Leicester, Mrs. Coy, Bamosine, yeah. Topsham, Corinth, and Versher. Good, you done good on that, Jack. <laughs> Any follow-up, Fred? No, guess not. Another question from Jack McMullen to Fred Tuttle. Well, Fred, you and I both agree that, uh, Education seems to be a way of improving life. Yes, it does. And I'm wondering if you'd agree with me that uh, talking to the businesses that might be able to offer opportunity to our young people would be a way of improving the curriculum in our schools. I, I think it would be a good idea. We get the, the taxes now come from a lot of poor people pay taxes they can't afford. They might go without food or clothes to uh, pay their taxes, you know. And I think money should come more equal from all people. Am I right? Well, I, I think uh, lower taxes make a yeah, lot of yeah, sense. Yeah, lower better. taxes helps a lot. Time now for our third question from Fred Tuttle to Jack McMullen. 
How do you, what was on Pompanusic? On Pompanusic. You ask me what is on Pompanusic? Wh- where is it? What is it? Um, I'm not sure what it you is. Know, <laughs> it's a town over near the Connecticut River somewhere. I, I think it's named after another town, but it's on Pompanusic. I heard that long time when I was a kid. Uh, my dad had a housekeeper, and he took her, her over there because she'd met her husband in the railroad station and on Pompanusic. Well, sounds like a romantic Yeah, it's over around Route 5, around Route 5, just a little way from Thetford. Well, I know where Thetford is. Yeah, it's right near that. I've been over in uh, Orange County a number of times. Yeah. Any follow-up, Fred? No, I guess not, unless he wants to... Uh... Jack, another question from Jack McMullen to Fred Tuttle. Well, Fred, we uh, we see some troubles coming in Asia right now. Yeah. With uh, currencies falling sharply yes, yes. and economies thrown into a tailspin. Yeah. I'm wondering uh, what you think the prospects are for Japan, uh, which hasn't yet suffered this kind of, uh, of problem, uh, compared to Indonesia, yeah. Thailand, and Korea, which yeah. have. Yeah. I I hope that all this don't bring in another World War, World War Three. sometime. It looks so in a few years from now it might. But those countries over there have got to do something to straighten themselves out. The United States can't afford to put millions and millions of dollars in there, billions of dollars to get them straight. So, you know, Japan, I mean, they taxed us back in uh, when they dropped the atomic bomb, but when they Pearl Harbor, they attacked just good Pearl Harbor, killed a lot of our servicemen. Yes, I know. This was in World War Two. Yeah, World War Two. Well, um, so you think they need to sort out their own problems? There. I would like to see it sorted out some way. Okay. Let me give you the phone number here at Switchboard. We're going to have a few more questions from each candidate, but we also want to get some listener calls in our program this night tonight. And our phone number is 1-800-639-2211. That's 1-800-639-2211. You may have a comment or a question for either candidate or for both uh, candidates. Your observations on this race, we certainly would enjoy hearing from you this evening. That's 1-800-639-2211. Fred, we have another question from you for Jack McMullen. Hey, Jack, you owned a place in Warren for 15 years, right? Yes. Uh, how many town meetings you've been to in Warren? I haven't been to uh, too many town meetings in Warren, Fred. Didn't have time. I mean, you were gone. Well, it was a uh, a second home for me. Uh, how many school meetings have you been to over there? Uh, I haven't been to school meetings over there either, Fred. Yeah. Any follow up, Fred? No, not I know one here. Okay. Another question from Jack McMullen for okay, Fred Tuttle. Jack. Okay, Fred. Uh, you mentioned that keeping campaign spending in line is a yes. is a good goal. Yeah. And uh, I proposed a campaign spending cap. You've proposed a lower one than yeah, mine. Yeah, very low. But don't you think Senator Leahy ought to join us in this? He should be. It should be low for every. I mean, it shouldn't be. Low. It should, they shouldn't put so much in a campaign. The poor people need all this money. Everybody needs money. People are going hungry all over the world, and they put hundred thousand dollars in the campaign, and what? Well, it could feed somebody. Well, it feeds those people who work on the campaign, at least. Yeah, feeds them. They get good eating. <laughs> Time now for another question from Fred Tuttle for Jack McMullen. Jack, this is a milk production question. How many tips does a Holstein have, and how many does a Jersey have? How many what? For... Tips, tips does a cow have? Uh, well, I, let's see. I took some lessons the other day i'm thinking about six if i'm about not four on a jersey cow four, all cows have four tits four okay uh sometimes they're born with five but the veterinary have to take one off so they can milk a milk machine because the milk machine is all set up for just four tits this is the new uh technology no no it's well, been not, on for years yeah for years ever since cows were here i mean you get you get you you use just four tits yes but milking machines are yeah milk machine, yeah them. but four milking machines they only had four tits you get an issue and you have to cut it off or something. Okay, well, that's uh, interesting to learn. Yeah. Another question from Jack McMullen for Fred Tuttle. Fred, you pointed out that people are having a hard time here. Yes. Uh, people earn about 15% below the national average yes, and yes. have to work hard to, to make uh, a living for themselves. Um, and yet we have some 
new companies here with good paying jobs yes. that, that have trouble finding people who can work in them. Do you think uh, it would make sense to uh, uh, bring the uh, kind of training that that uh, these schools could offer to our children so that they can uh, take the jobs which are good? Yes, I wish we could, but here in Vermont we got a situation where in the middle of Vermont an educated person got to drive 50 miles one way to uh, find a job. So he has a 100 miles round trip a day if he's educated to get a good job down the Hanover or Burlington or somewhere to work. I mean, that's going to take a lot of time. Well, you know, with the Internet, we might be able to... Uh, work on that problem. I don't know anything about the internet. Don't want to know about it. Well, it's something new that know, allows I, people to work in their homes yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and still make good pay. Now, isn't that going to cause a lot of trouble someday? Well, I don't think so. I think it'll bring uh, a lot of, of potential and opportunity to people where they live now. Didn't they have Almost a, back in the 19th century. Didn't, in a didn't they have a murder in New England about that little while ago, the internet on the... Well, uh, there was somebody who yeah, uh, yeah. lured somebody yeah, yeah, sure. on the Internet, but uh, this is the exception, not the rule. I know, I know what you mean, but... We have time for one more question from Fred Tuttle for Jack McMullen. What do you think of BST? Well, I don't think it's a, it's a good thing. It's a hormone that's given to... The cows, yeah, cows give and, more milk. And it does produce more milk, yeah. but some people prefer to get their milk without this kind of stimulus. Uh, what they give that cow to give more milk, would that cause cancer in the human being or something, maybe? Well, some people think so. I don't. I think do. I think so. Anything you do, it ain't causes cancer, I believe, today. It certainly stimulates greater milk yeah, production. Yeah, yeah, it does. But great, greater milk production, we don't need it. So uh, you're, you're against having BST? Yes, yes. Well, I, I think... I'm against uh, a lot of this new stuff. Well, it, uh, it uh, certainly is a, a new technology yeah. that uh, a lot of people are concerned Maybe about. I'm wrong on this, but when I was a boy growing up, you never heard of all this breast cancer. You never heard of all these cancers that they have today. Well, I think cancer's been with us a while. I but, do, but it wasn't ever time. Uh, we knew less about it back yeah. then. Uh, but, yes, I think probably when you were growing up, lifestyle was a little bit healthier. Yeah, it was. I, I know it was. Even when I was overseas in the army, it was nice. I mean, it wasn't that bad. We had good food, C yeah. ration, K ration. No, it was all clean stuff. Well, I remember Navy food was pretty good too. Yeah. Time now for our last question from Jack McMullen to Fred Tuttle. Fred, um, I'm wondering as we. Uh, Think about Vermont's future. Uh, you mentioned that uh, we need to provide more opportunity here. Yes. What are the ways you would you would propose that we do this? I would try to bring a dairy farmer back. I would try to bring small business into the state, which we don't do anymore, not too much. And a lot of things could be done. Uh, for, for instance, uh, maybe a special education for some of the young people in our little communities so he gets education on certain things that they wanted to do, you know. Well, I... I, I like, like the Technical College over at Randolph Center and stuff like that, you know. Yes, that's a good program over yeah, yeah. the Technical if College. If a child moved in here, and he did, I didn't go to high school. I didn't like high school. But I didn't have nothing else to go to then. I, my dad wanted me to go to agriculture school, but I went to my go to the army instead. But I didn't get no education. I wish now I had, but was no opportunity back in those days well, in this, my hometown. Well, this is what... Uh, I'm arguing for. I'm saying that education is the way to a better life. It is. It is. And uh, I agree with you that uh, if we could provide the relevant training, people yes. could could do better in their lives. I mean, there's some smart children in the state of Vermont that want a good education. They haven't got money. They can't afford to be too much money for an education. It takes them years to pay it back. Well, it's a problem, and yes. Vermont doesn't give a priority no, to no, its education no. system. That concludes our round of candidate questions. Our phone number here at Switchboard, 1-800-639-2211. We're going to go to our callers now. And if a caller asks a question of one candidate, the other candidate should feel free to uh, also offer an answer if they want to. We're going to start off tonight with Jay, who's calling from Essex Junction. Hi, Jay. Welcome to Switchboard. Thank you. My question is for Mr. McMullen. Mr. McMullen, there are people who say that the U.S. Senate is the world's most exclusive club and that the reason you're here is because you want to be a member of that club, not so much to do good for the people of Vermont or the people of the nation. And we've certainly seen a lot of U.S. senators who spend all their time, it seems, 
trying to just stay there as much as they can, last in office 40 years if they can manage it. I personally would be much more likely to vote for somebody who would vow before even taking office, before Election Day, to seek only one term and no matter what, not keep in that run-of-the-mill, always going back, always running for re-election thing. Would you be willing to pledge never to run again if you are elected to basically make yourself a one-term senator to go and do what's best for Vermont and not become part of the rat race? Well, I'd certainly be inclined to do what's best for Vermont. Uh, I'm not prepared to uh, say that I'd be a one-term senator. On the other hand, I'm 56 years old and I've never been in politics before. Uh, Unlike our current senator who's spent uh, four terms down there and is seeking his fifth term. Uh, so that would be 24 years going on 30. Uh, I personally believe that uh, believe in the concept of a citizen legislator, which I think is what your question is directed toward. And uh, I've come to a point in life where I, I do want to make a contribution. And I, I think I can bring the uh, learning and, and experience that I've had in business to uh, make a contribution here in Vermont, which is now my home. Fred, would you like to respond to that question? Uh, maybe my, my idea, I'm not right, but my idea, I think a senator maybe should be down there two terms to get used to it, and he'd do a lot better the second term than he would the first term because he would know more of the people and, and what, our, what they wanted, what our projects were. Jay, thanks for your phone call. Let's turn to Philip, who's calling from Plainfield. Hi, Philip. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Um, I would basically just have a comment. A lot of people have been saying that Fred's um, desire to run in this race is making a mockery of democracy. I think it does just the opposite. What it does is it shows that any individual, whether or not they're a lawyer, whether or not they have money, whether or not they're educated, can go through the political process and get to the point that Fred has gotten to. And I think that that is a very important aspect to our political system that has very much gotten um, pushed under the rug. And the other thing I'd like to say to um, Jack McMullen, I don't really know much about you, and I have to be very honest about this. I am a liberal Democrat. Uh, The only Republican I have ever voted for is Jeffords because he's not really (laughs) a true Republican. And um, but I'm I'm having different ideas this time. But in any case, I would like to thank Jack McMullen for being so um, so civilized in this debate, because last um, night's debate was totally uncivilized. <laughs> um, and so Akola did mention that um, in terms of the way Bernie Rome was dis- treating um, Ruth Dwyer. So I would just like to say that, and, and Fred, good luck. Um, okay, uh, thank you very much. You know, I think it's really refreshing that someone is taking a chance at doing something that they don't have any experience in, and I think your questions are extremely refreshing. And Jack, I hope you got a little bit of an education in that. Well, I think uh, I did. To, to me, Jack's a good man. I like Jack. And I like Fred, too. Okay, good. Philip, thanks for your phone call. Let's okay. Talk, let's talk to Susan, who's calling from Salisbury. Hi, Susan. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Um, I have a question for Mr. McMullen. I, I live, by the way, just north of the town Leicester, which Mr. McMullen mispronounced. Um, <laughs> and, and I have a question. Um, Mr. McMullen, you haven't been in the state for a very long time, and I'm wondering how you feel you can adequately represent the needs of Vermonters in the U.S. Senate. Well, I've uh, owned a home here for 15 years, uh, and I've spent the last year and a half visiting all 14 counties of Vermont many times, and many of the towns. I'm not sure I pronounced them all right, but uh, mm-hmm. I've met five or 600 people in that process individually, including Fred, yes. who's a, a very nice man. And I've met thousands of other people in meetings and the like. And I, I, I think I can fairly say that I've, I know more about... Uh, Vermont than I know of any other place I've been in that process. Uh, Additionally, I come to Vermont, I think, uh, with the traditional Vermont values of uh, self-reliance, individual initiative, and hard work. Values I think I share with Fred. Susan, thanks for your phone call. You've heard this, I'm sure, Susan's comments, or comments like Susan's throughout the, the campaign. Did you anticipate getting this kind of reaction? Oh, me, Fred, you mean? No, I'm just thinking oh, about oh, Jack. Yeah, Jack, okay. Well, um, here's how I think about it. I 
Sure. I think it's, um, it's a valid question to ask, but I, I think it's far from the only question. We live in America, and in America... Uh, where Fred in his day was uh, sent abroad to defend his country. In my day, I was uh, doing service in the Navy. Uh, Americans move quite a bit. Uh, I've had a connection with Vermont for for 15 years. I've lived here for the better part of two years as a permanent resident, and I really love the state. I've grown to love the state. I think uh, being a Vermonter is more a state of mind and a set of values that you bring to the uh, to the uh, table. And on both scores, I feel very close to Vermont. Let's talk to Danny, who is calling from South Randolph. Hi, Danny. Welcome to the program. Hi, good evening. My, my question is for Mr. McMullen. Um, Jack, you talk a lot about uh, lowering taxes. I, I'm just interested. Um, how long have you been paying income tax to the state of Vermont? Well, I mean, I've been here the better part of two years, so I've paid one year's worth of income tax to the state of Vermont. I'll be paying uh, 98 taxes this year. Danny, why is that question important to you? Well, I think that, uh, you know, in, in terms of the uh, issues of equity uh, and financial equity within the state, um, there's a question right now, obviously, between uh, the discrepancies between property taxes and, and also statewide income tax. And I just was wondering if, if Mr. McMullen had uh, had any experience and, and what that experience might have been. Well, let me uh, elaborate. Uh, you were talking about income tax, and that's what I, I answered. But with regard to property tax, I've been a property taxpayer in Vermont for 15 years. Danny, thanks for your phone call. 1-800-639-2211 is our phone number here at Switchboard. Our guest this evening, the Republican U.S. Senate candidates, Retired dairy farmer Fred Tuttle and businessman Jack McMullen. If you feel free to give us a call at 1 800 639 2211. Let's talk to Spencer, who's calling from Burlington. Hi, Spencer. Thanks Welcome to the much program. Thanks for having the show. I'm really, really glad you're doing this series. Uh, a question for Mr. McMullen, um, and if Mr. Tuttle wants to follow up, that would be great. I, I'm not an expert on this sort of thing, but I like to think that who the person is going to represent us to the U.S. Senate is so what i'd like to ask mr mcmullen is to please name as many different cows as he can because it's you know agriculture is pretty important thank you well holsteins uh, i guess are one cow guernseys are another uh, and jerseys there's three got a little help from fred on that last thank you thank you milk and short one tell him that yeah spencer thanks for your phone call Let's talk to Jordan, who's calling from Cornwall. Hi, Jordan. Welcome to Switchboard. Thank you. I have a question for Candidate McMullen. I was uh, glad to hear him refer to the Internet and some of the advantages that it can bring to us um, in Vermont. I was um, interested to receive this morning actually a piece of unsolicited email from um, Mr. McMullen's campaign, um, which I thought was an interesting and creative use, although a controversial one in terms of new technology and campaigning. What I was most curious at is that it was actually sent out by a uh, state committee member from the Massachusetts Republican Party. And I was wondering um, how Mr. McMullen would uh, respond to sort of the use of um, party members from other states in uh, a campaign in Vermont. Well, I think that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that piece of email was sent out from our campaign headquarters, which is in Burlington. Uh, Vermont, so I don't know what the caller is uh, referring to. The email was actually uh, someone who was listed as a state committee member from oh, you might Norfolk, be... Bristol, and Plymouth in uh, Massachusetts. Well, uh, I don't know who you <clears throat> who you might be referring to. My campaign manager is from Massachusetts. That's well known. As I say, it's something that was unsolicited. I found it kind of surprising, frankly. But um, And I was wondering, sort of, you know, maybe to, to follow well, up and put the question in perspective, um, what Mr. McMullen's relationship is then with the um, Republican Party in Vermont? What my relationship is with it? I'm a member of the Republican Party in Vermont and a candidate for the United States Senate. And um, my campaign is uh, being run out of uh, Burlington in Vermont. Jordan, thanks for your phone call. Let's turn to Ethan, who's calling from Burlington. Hi, Ethan. Welcome to the program. Thank you much. I've got a question for Mr. Uh, McMullen as well. Um, I understand that your residence in Vermont has been the primary focus of discussion in your bid for U.S. Senate. 
I uh, wanted to know, could you demonstrate to tonight's listeners your knowledge of Vermont by naming just three of the six towns that border Warren, where your summer home sits? Sure. Um, let me name the... the, the, the there's uh, Waitsfield, Moortown, Irisville, um, and, uh, and Warren, of course, and there's Lincoln... Uh, uh, down 100 the other way. Across the gap, there's Roxbury. Uh, while we're at it, why don't I name the 14 counties in Vermont? Maybe that would help you. Um, we can uh, start with Chittenden, where I live, Washington, where my house was, Franklin, Lamoille, Orleans, Orange, Caledonia, Essex, Windsor, uh, Bennington, Rutland, Addison, and uh, Wyndham. Ethan, thanks for your phone call. Let's talk to Mariah, who's calling from Middlebury. Hi, Mariah. Welcome to Switchboard. Hi, thanks. I just have one quick question um, for both candidates, and I was wondering what their stand on abortion is. Me or you? Fred, why don't you start us off? I don't really believe in abortion, not unless the woman is very sick and the child is going to die and something wrong, but I don't believe in these young girls getting pregnant and the idea they can get an abortion. I don't think it should happen in Vermont or any other state. I think it should be very, to be very bad off in the mother's life before they have an abortion. Chuck McMullen? Uh, I'm against uh, partial birth abortion, which I feel is an abhorrent procedure. But I recognize the uh, supreme law of the land, a woman's right to choose apart from that. Mariah, does that answer your question? Yep, it does. Thank you. Hey, thanks for calling. Let's talk to Richard, who is calling from Chester. Hi, Richard. Welcome to the program. Hello. What's on your mind tonight? Hi there. This this is Richard Brown. I'm a gentleman farmer down here in Chester. I had, I had a question for both these boys. Uh, I've uh, <clears throat> been reading here... Uh, a lot about exploitation in the Rutland Herald with Bill and Monica down in down in Washington, where they both want to go. Uh. And uh, and there's this poll there that was just in there the other day about uh, some macro international poll that said Vermonters see Fred as exploiting them because he's doing all this as a publicity stunt, and Jack's exploiting them because he's a whatever they call Jack. it, you a an- carpet, you answer, Jack. carpet bagger. You answer, but. Uh, I had a I had a question to, I wanted to ask Fred and then one for both of them. That is, uh, Fred, how long has it been since those girly shows? Don't they stopped them over. Uh, it's there? been. Uh, I have is, uh, you both think that it's been up close ten years since they had the girly show. Um, my wife caught me coming out of that one. She pretty near killed me. So next year or two they ended right there. Both answer that question. Hmm. I said, do you think those girly shows are exploiting women or not? No, I don't. I, there was something just for the fair to a man wanting to go in and see a woman. It was, I think it won't hurt nothing back in those days. It might be a lot worse today because people's minds are gone. Everything is different today, and it's all sex today. Everybody talks that, and everything's gone today. But back in those days, I call it pretty good. The gentlemen were gentlemen. They didn't touch the women in the girly shows, and it was different than just today. Today, I don't believe they could run a girly show. Jack? Uh, what's the question? <laughs> the question, I think, was, do you think girly shows exploit women? Well, I think, that, as Fred said, that was a different time. Yeah. Today it would be considered exploit. Oh, yeah, today it'd be worse. Richard, thanks for your phone call. We're going to turn now to Terry, who is calling from Chelsea. Hi, Terry. Welcome to the program. Uh, thanks. Uh, hi, Jack. This is a question, I guess, for you and Fred can comment. Um, you've talked a lot tonight about how you support technology-based education and uh, incentives to foster telecommuting-type businesses. And as we've seen recently in the uh, crises in the Asian and Russian economies, um, specifically, I guess, in Russia, nations which do not produce goods uh, really don't have an economic basis to stand on. Now, how do you propose to help strengthen Vermont's manufacturing and agricultural base while fostering uh, more information-based technologies. I mean, we, we still have to produce something, don't we? Well, uh, I didn't want to convey the impression that I, I didn't think we should do everything we could to foster the businesses that are here already, farms and manufacturing businesses. Uh, the sad truth of the matter is, in the farming world, 
we're producing more dairy products now than we did in Fred's youth and even 15 years ago with a fourth as many farms. So even if we um, take a look at that picture, we're not we're producing more efficiently, and that's causing pressure on the family farm, as Fred has pointed out. Uh, with regard to manufacturing, because of our unfriendly climate to business and our high tax structure, we've been losing manufacturing jobs, not to mention uh, high electric rates and going higher. So um, also manufacturing jobs were to the 19th century what information services jobs are to the 21st century. What I mean to say is that all of the new jobs being formed, 30% of them are in uh, information services, media, telecommunications, and the like. Uh, where These are knowledge-based jobs. Uh, Microsoft uh, is the number one most valuable company in the world today, running neck and neck with GE, which has been around five or six times longer. And it doesn't uh, produce anything but micro diskettes, which go on computers and help people become more effective in their work. And so I don't completely agree with the caller that we need to uh, only look to manufacturing jobs and have to produce things. I think in the next era, equally important will be uh, producing ways of making our lives easier, uh, more entertaining, more informational, more educational. And all of this is, uh, can be done without hard assets. That's why these kinds of jobs make a lot of sense for Vermont, because they can be brought here done out of 19th century villages and not impact the environment and beauty that we have here. Terry, thanks for your phone call. We'll be back with more of our program right after this short break. Tonight on Switchboard, we have the Republican candidates for the U.S. Senate, businessman Jack McMullen and retired dairy farmer Fred Tuttle. Coming up next week on Switchboard, on Tuesday night, we'll kick off our primary election coverage, and our guest will be former Republican Party State Director Brian Cosgrove, and then we'll have field reports throughout the program. On Wednesday night, Nina Keck will examine a special report that looks at the social well-being of Vermont, and her guest will be Human Services Agency Secretary Cornelius Hogan. Then on Thursday night, Steve Zinn will host a program that looks at prostate cancer. 1-800-639-2211, our phone number here at Switchboard. If you'd like to ask a question, make a comment, we certainly would enjoy hearing from you. That's 1-800-639-2211. Let's talk to Maria, who's calling from Essex Junction. Hi, Maria. Uh, hi. I had a question for Mr. Tuttle. Yeah. Um, Mr. Tuttle, now uh, the newspapers have been attacking Jack because he's a self-made millionaire, but the fact is is that you own 300 acres of land. Of yeah, uh, land. Uh, was... my, my folks did, but I had to give it to my daughter because I, I couldn't save her taxes. Uh, well, how much are you worth? Huh? How much are you worth? How much money am I worth? Yeah. I'm worth about nothing. About nothing? About nothing. About 15 cents, I should say, full. No, I don't have I just own a tenth, uh, about a fourth of my house I live in. Now, you we couldn't keep it. I, can't, I couldn't pay for taxes. All I had was Social Security. Ah. Now, you said that you were only going to limit your uh, your spending. Yeah, the $17, your... yeah. Uh-huh. Well, just the other day I was reading Seven Days, and, and uh, there was a small ad from you, along with all of your bumper stickers and pins out there. I think you've exceeded your amount. So uh, the question, another question I have is, have you, how much money have you put into this campaign? Uh, not or, too much. No, I didn't have it. I didn't have the money. I'm poor. Are, are you using the movie to huh? fund your campaign, which is a federal election commission violation? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not using anything. Well, I, I think it's quite upsetting uh, what's going on. I think that m your campaign manager, Mr. O'Brien, is, is a Democrat, and I think this is a ploy, and I think it's just disgusting. And I think that you're being manipulated, and I, I think it's really sad, because I don't think a U.S. senator should have to answer how many, uh, you know, or what kind of cows there are. He should be, you know, concentrating on the ideas that Jack has. So thank you very much. <laughs> Maria, <laughs> thanks for your phone call. <laughs> Let's turn now to Kagam, who is calling from Springfield. Hi, welcome to Switchboard. Thank you. Um, I'd like to comment, actually, on what the woman before me has just said. I don't think that on the floor of the Senate um, they're going to be asking uh, what kind of cows there are in Vermont. I think I'd like to hear what abilities, what qualities of personality each candidate has um, to become a senator and to be our spokesperson. Jack? Well, I, I can't disagree with that. Uh, Fred has me on the uh, uh, knowledge of dairy farming, I have to agree. 
although uh, it's one of the things that, that gives Vermont its character and beauty, and we certainly want to uh, do all we can to preserve dairy farming in the state. But uh, I'm no expert on that. On the other hand, I think I have uh, other qualifications that uh, would make me an effective senator if I were elected. Thanks for calling. We're going to turn now to Woody, who is calling from Shalott. Hi, Woody. Welcome to the Switchboard. Thank you. This is for both gentlemen. Uh, It's my belief that Vermont's greatest resource after her people, of course, is the family farm and that preserving our beautiful landscape and the spirit that dwells in nature is the most important thing we can do as Vermonters. And I'd like to hear what both candidates have to say about this. Thank you. Okay, Fred, why don't we start with you? Uh, Now, when I was a young boy, I think probably 12, 14, I think it was about 50 farms in Tunbridge. And every farm, every town had 40, 50 farms. They had a cream in each town. They had plenty of work for the people working on the farms. And they had three, four saw mills in each town, every town same. And they had all these plenty of cows. Everybody had plenty of milk. And the truck took the milk to uh, South Ron from Tunbridge every day. And it went to Boston, and they had that. This morning's milk had drink in Boston tonight. Now it's going three, four days before they get there. Uh, I think they should bring the farmer back if they could, because something's going to happen tomorrow. It's going to be all gone someday. The farmer's be all gone and everything. To me, it's pretty well gone now. Well, as I said before, Vermont uh, is a high-tax state. Uh, one thing we could do to help the family farm would be to eliminate death taxes, or estate taxes, as they're called. Uh, That would help people pass farms from one generation to the next. Uh, I think, though, the the trend we see at work in Vermont is also at work in the country as a whole. There is very... We're producing as much product with a lot less farmers and farms. And so what that says to me is that we uh, need to look to ways where people can sustain family farming. That might mean uh, specialized berry farms and other kinds of farms which uh, attract the attention of the public and are not so much a commodity business. If we want to preserve dairy farming in the state at the family farm level, I think the Dairy Compact gives us a start, but I think we'd have to do more to preserve that working farm. And if we want to do that, we can make that decision as taxpayers, but I think it will take some economic support to allow small farms to continue, for the most part. There are some small farmers who have figured ways uh, of, uh, of making product that's uh, uh, not a commodity, but for, for those who are, who are uh, operating in commodity markets, they'll need a little bit of help. Woody, thanks for your phone call. Let's talk to Gordon, who is calling from East Corinth. Hi, Gordon. Welcome to Switchboard. Uh, thank you. Jack, this is a, a question for you. You mentioned earlier that uh, high-tech jobs uh, could be brought into the state without uh, increasing uh, the urban sprawl and people could work out of the village areas. Do you think that there are enough uh, technologically-minded residents here in the state now to fill those jobs, or do you think that uh, we'd have to import more people and uh, create more sprawl to fill those jobs? Well, that's a very good question. As things stand now, the answer is no, there aren't enough people. And many people think when you talk about those kinds of high-tech or knowledge jobs that that's not them. Uh, But, uh, and in fact, the few high-tech jobs or companies that we have here have to look outside the state to to, uh, fill those jobs. But what I'm arguing for in my uh, campaign is that we could create better paying jobs here in Vermont for Vermonters by adjusting our education system, talking to the kinds of businesses that have these sorts of jobs, and adjusting our curriculum to provide the kinds of skills necessary to take that kind of uh, work. And if we did that, Vermonters could Vermonters are in every other way uh, better educated than the national average. They have good reading skills and uh, are generally... Uh, good workers, so there's no reason why they can't learn these skills, and that's what we need to do. Our present education system, especially K-12, through is decoupled from the marketplace for jobs, and we need to uh, uh, take a common-sense look at that so that people can get these kinds of better-paying jobs. Gordon, you think that'll work? 
Well, uh, it's a long. It's definitely a good idea, and it's a long-term approach to a to a real problem that we're going to have to face uh, in the future. But in the interim, how would you uh, uh, how would you prom- uh, for instance promote existing businesses and uh, help them out in a fashion that? Oh, well, say if every business in Vermont could hire one more employee, uh, I don't think there's probably a big enough labor pool available in the state of Vermont to, to handle even a one employee per existing business increase. Uh, how do you... How do you? Well, I, I disagree with that, but uh, I, I get the point of, of your question, I think. Uh, I think it, one thing we could do is become more business friendly in the state of Vermont. One of the things I've been arguing for in my campaign is that federal officials should work in cooperation with state officials to improve the business climate in the state while protecting the environment. Now, one way we could do that is uh, to uh, provide one-stop shopping in the state for permits. That's not a federal job to do, but it's a job that uh, could be done in concert with, at the federal level, lowering federal taxes. Um, uh, Providing... Uh, more money uh, for businesses to expand. In in Vermont, there are businesses that want to expand, like Omia, uh, who are uh, being blocked by uh, unfriendly business uh, uh, climate here, bureaucracies that aren't really interested in in, uh, looking out for the economic future, more interested in in protecting their turf. And these are the kinds of things that could be changed. At the federal level, there's a number of things that could be done to to help a job creation. Uh, we could uh, look at uh, the estate tax for family farms, as I mentioned before. We could look at the accounting treatment and tax treatment of stock incentives, which are the way that new businesses are created and people are rewarded for the equity, uh, the sweat equity they put into new businesses. We could uh, make patent law more streamlined. We could assist capital formation by R&D credits or capital gains tax reductions. All of these things would be helpful to business at the federal level, and I would want to work with uh, state officials to improve the business climate in the state as well. Gordon, thanks for your phone call. Let's turn to Chris, who's calling from Fletcher. Hi, Chris. Welcome to the program. Thank you. This is a question for Jack. I've been listening to the program, and earlier you said (laughs) that you haven't attended a town meeting or a school board meeting. Well, actually, I have attended town meetings, but they asked me if it was in Warren, and uh, the answer was no, I didn't in Warren. Okay. I was curious, because my impression of that was that you hadn't. How do I know that, you know, being essentially new to the state within two years, how do I know that you're going to represent the Vermont people when you haven't taken the time to be involved with things as simple as a town meeting or something like that? Well, as I said, I have been to town meetings, uh, just not one in Warren. Um, Now... (laughs) I, I, I think I'd ask that question of our present state government, which has just ended local control of uh, all education in Vermont by passing Act 60. The, these people presumably have been to town meeting. Did they forget what it was all about? Chris, do you have a follow-up question? Um, no, not necessarily. I guess I agree with his Act 60 point, but I'm I'm not sure how... You know, he's visited people around the state, but he doesn't seem to have been involved with things in the state yet. Well, let me say this. Um, we live in an America that's uh, a land of uh, of mobility and uh, a land of, hopefully, a land of equal opportunity, a land where people can be judged as individuals on the merits. Now, we've spent seven or eight months talking about my residence. Uh, it's no secret that I've owned a home here for 15 years and become familiar with Vermont issues in that period of time. I've only become uh, fully engaged with Vermont in the last two years, and I've made no secret of that. But I don't think in any way this is the most important issue facing the Vermont electorate. Uh, what I do think when I travel around the state and talk to people, they don't talk to me about my residence. Many fifth and sixth generation Vermonters tell me if I have good ideas for improving economic opportunity for poor and middle class people, they'd like to hear them. Uh, That's how America is. As it is in Vermont today, many of our children, because of lack of economic opportunity, have to leave the state to find their way in life. And thankfully, as I've received a cordial welcome here in Vermont, they generally receive a cordial welcome, as all Americans do, in their adoptive states. And I would hope that that, uh, Senator Leahy would uh, uh, 
uh, join our debate on the issues. Uh, he has a different philosophy of governance than I have and uh, than I think Fred has, actually, listening to Fred's uh, ideas on the issues. And we really deserve a debate on that. Uh, I think in, uh, in many ways I bring uh, qualifications, a, a deep knowledge of business, of the new technologies that can provide us opportunity. Uh, I've taught at the highest levels in education, and I think uh, I have something to offer, a different thing than Senator Leahy does, uh, about these issues. And I think uh, my residence uh, question, the, the question about my residence, I, I think I've done my best uh, to uh, to make a contribution to my, uh, my adopted state. Chris, thanks for your phone call. Let's turn to Elizabeth, who's calling from Lincoln. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome to Switchboard. Hi. Um, I'm interested in the dialogue uh about whether or not Mr. McMullen should have to answer basic questions about Vermont. A few uh, minutes ago, he answered a question about the town surrounding his town and uh, said that Lincoln was down Route 100. Well, he was a mountain range away. I'm awful glad that when Senator Leahy came down to see Lincoln after the flood that he knew where it was. I'd like to ask Fred <laughs> yeah. um, what... Uh, whether or not he thinks he would be able to find the towns that were flooded. Oh, would, would you be able to make your way over to Lincoln, friend? No, once in a while I do. We had been afraid of that a little while ago, one of those towns. Uh, no, I don't know too much about that. And, of course, I'm pretty near 80 years old here now, and I go over that country, and it's all changed. I don't know where I am. And it was one time I did know one town from the other, way, but now I, it's changed so much, and the new roads and the bridges are changed, and... Houses and new houses going up where it didn't used to be houses. I couldn't find my way around over there. Well, could I make a comment, Bob? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Lincoln is across the Gap Road, as the caller has indicated, but you can reach the Gap Road by Route 100 south of Warren. Elizabeth, thanks for your phone call. Let's turn now to Ben, who's calling from South Burlington. Hi, Ben. Welcome to Switchboard. Um, I'd like to know... Um, what you would do for children if you were elected? Good question. Fred Tuttle, what will you do for children? I would do all I could for the children. My wife and I adopted two children, and they are wonderful kids. One is 33, and the other one is 30 years old now, and we gave them a good home. They both got a good education, and they both got a good job, and they're wonderful kids. And I, I, we can't do too much for our children. We should do a lot better by them. And I think some of the people who have a wife and a husband both work, I think one of them should at least try to get by on one, uh, you know, working pay to somebody stay home, be home at night when those kids get home from school. You give those kids a chance and they'll be wonderful kids when they grow up. I guarantee that. Jack McMullen, what will you do for children? Well, uh, my idea for children is to provide them the kind of economic opportunity past generations have had. And the way to do that is to... Uh, upgrade our education system to provide them that kind of opportunity. And uh, I, would, I would like to think that the, the children of this generation could do as well as Fred's children. Ben, thanks for your phone call. Let's talk to Scott, who is calling from Pomfret. Hi, Scott. Welcome to Switchboard. Hey, welcome, gentlemen. How are you? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you just fine. Great. Hey, um, I, uh, uh, Fred, uh, this yeah. is a question for both of you, but I... Uh, Absolutely enjoyed uh, this uh, 48 minutes so far. It's very okay, entertaining good. and educational. Good. Uh, I enjoyed your movie, and I was curious, if you're elected, would you um, hire Bruce uh, Lyons to be your press secretary? Yeah, I, I sure would. Yeah, sure. And my uh, question for uh, Jack is, Jack, uh, uh, I think uh, we all know if Fred won, he would uh, have a Vermont staff and oh, yeah. uh, suspect that a Vermont staff would help balance. Uh, and this is not to be critical, because I have a lot of respect for you, Jack, and I've read a little bit about you in uh, and uh, except for the fact that you're not from Vermont, I think, uh, uh, you know, I think that's a weakness of yours. Would you uh, compensate that by hiring uh, and going out of your way to hire Vermonters to be on your staff if you're a uh, U.S. senator representing Vermont? Oh, of course I'd hire Vermonters. Uh, may I ask you a question? Surely. How many Vermonters you got over in your town over that way? I live uh, in Tunbridge. We don't have that many left. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I actually grew up a little north of you in uh, Washington, Vermont. But, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, there's still a lot of Vermonters there. Palm Fred, I know we're in Washington, yeah. yeah. Uh, Palm Fred, I think, is a little bit like Tunbridge. And, I do, uh, too. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, I uh, I didn't know how many uh, uh, tits was on a couch till I heard tonight, and I grew up in Vermont, so I guess yeah, okay. that against Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, thanks for your phone call. Let's talk to Mike, who's calling from Middlebury. 
Hi, Mike. Welcome to Switchboard. Hi. Um, I was wondering, uh, uh, this is a question for Fred Tuttle. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering if, uh, well, how harmful you believe marijuana is and if hemp should be legalized? Uh, I, I'm not against it. I mean, I don't really know, but I mean, I think if I had a charge of it, I would want it legalized. So I like to see everything legalized so it would be legal and you wouldn't have to go somewhere and steal it. I like to see everything legal. Everything legalized. It was years ago. They had all that stuff years ago. Maybe it wasn't legalized, but they had it. And I think it's a lot better to have something legalized. You don't have to go and steal it and hide it and do all this and that. And then they do a lot more damage where it isn't legalized because they uh, they just go and get it. Then it's something they want. You, you legalize anything, and it helps it. It it uh, really cures it. You know, going after it. They use about half of it to legalize everything the same way. Jack McMullen, earlier in the program, you were talking about ways to find to diversify Vermont's agriculture industry. Would legalizing hemp be one of them? It's not one I would favor, no. Mike, thanks for your phone call. Let's talk to Frank, who's calling from Winooski. Hi, Frank. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, I have actually questions for both candidates. First, uh, Mr. McMullen. I was wondering if you were aware of the policy behind the estate tax. You made a statement earlier saying that you would abolish the estate tax in order to save the family farm. Um, and there is a annual estate tax exclusion on the federal level. I was wondering if you could reiter- reiterate uh, what you think the policy behind the federal estate tax is. Uh, as far as I can see, it's to prevent wealth from moving from one generation to the next. Uh, but unfortunately, most of the job creation in our country and uh, many of the jobs are in small businesses and small farms. And the estate tax is well known to, to uh, be devastating to these kinds of enterprises at the time of succession when, when the person who owns them dies. So I think we need to really examine that. Uh, it, it, the uh, concept behind the estate tax... Uh, you know, may be a little bit outdated at this point. And it's, it, I, I'm not the only one who feels this way. The uh, uh, small business uh, professional associations and uh, the NFIB also feel this way about the estate tax. Frank, thanks for your phone call. We're going to try to get a few more callers in before the end of our program, and we're going to start with Ben, who's calling from Shalott. Hi, Ben. Welcome to the program. I'd like to ask either of the candidates what they think um, of uh, what would be actually be more of an issue that would be faced by a U.S. senator rather than one faced by a Vermont farmer or uh, uh, somebody in the state Senate. Uh, and that is what they think um, uh, their position would be with regards to funding in the Department of Defense and um, on uh, issues of uh, world peace where the U.S. has some influence, such as in the Middle East. Okay, Ben. Fred Tuttle, what do you think about defense spending? Well, I think we should do what we can. We can't overdo it because the people need the money. But, I mean, we've got to do something over cross. We've got to spend some money to get this straightened around. I don't know how the money is going to do it or what's going to do it. But I know during World War II they uh, dropped the atomic bomb, and that and it was supposed to end all wars, but we had wars after that. So I really – something's got to be done or it's going to be a lot worse. Of it. We'll be in a big war, World War number three before they know it if they don't do something. I don't know what to do. Okay. Jack McMullen. Well, um, our armed forces um, have suffered a severe decline recently in their readiness status uh, and in the uh, the number of divisions and ships that are available to handle crises. I think that we need to uh, pay attention to that. We don't need to go back to Cold War spending levels, but I think we've cut about as far as we should be cutting in defense. The world is, if anything, a more dangerous place than it was. And this deals with the other part of the caller's question. Uh, How can we help the cause of peace? Well, uh, we have, as the last remaining superpower, an important role to play in the world. We can't do everything, but if we have no military to project into crisis areas, then we'll be uh, hard-pressed to preserve the peace and things can get out of control, as we've seen in Bosnia. So... I think the two questions are related, and um, in summary, I think that we need to uh, pay attention to our defense readiness at this point. Let's see if we can get a quick call in from Charles, who's calling in Northfield. Hi, Charles. Welcome to the program. Thanks so much. Quick question. I want to know, for uh, Jack, you were a nuke in the Navy. You worked for Code 08. 
what is what do you see as the most equitable equitable way to produce electricity for the state of Vermont? And Fred, that's to you also. Well, uh, nuclear power in Vermont uh, produces uh, it's a, it's eighty percent of the power that's produced in Vermont, and it's forty percent of the use in Vermont. Vermont Yankee has been operating since nineteen seventy two without uh, serious incident safe, clean power. Uh, There is one problem to resolve, and that's the ultimate disposal of waste uh, that's been bogged down in politics uh, in Washington and in Vermont, for that matter. Uh, If we don't uh, solve... We need to solve that problem, but it can be solved. Uh, Texas has decided on its own to have a low-level nuclear waste facility. Uh, it's it rounded up Vermont and Maine because uh, under federal law you need other, uh, at least one other state, and I guess they wanted to have two small states. But basically they're building that facility for their own purposes. Uh, that could help solve the low-level waste problem, and Nevada is supposed to help solve the high-level waste problem. But if we don't solve those problems, uh, then the waste needs to be stored on site. But uh, the power is uh, is clean and efficient. Fred? Jack done a good job answering that question. I have nothing more to say about it. All right. Yes, sir. You've done a good job. Let's turn now to our closing statements at the end of the program, and we're going to start, Fred, with you for your closing statement. The U.S. Senate is full of millionaires and lawyers. I'm not a millionaire, not a lawyer. I'm a senior citizen and want to help senior citizens. I'm a farmer, and I want to help farmers. I'm a (coughs) veteran. I want to help veterans. I live on Social Security, and I know what that means. I'm a 10th grade dropout. My granddaughters graduate from Middlebury, UVM, and Johnson State College. I want dropouts to be able to send their grandchildren to college. I am a Vermonter. My father was a Vermonter. My grandfather was a Vermonter. My great-great-grandfather, he was a flatlander. I'm a man with a plan, and I plan to stand for Vermonters. Thank you. Jack McMullen. Well, I like Fred's uh, closing <laughs> statement, actually, and I agree with him. I think uh, his life shows the possibility of America if we stick to our founding principles. And the possibility was that his grandchildren became college graduates, yeah. although he was a dropout. And that brings me back to my basic theme. Education is the key to whatever I've su- uh, succeeded in doing in life. I started out in a poor family, too, Fred. Mm-hmm. I know you did, yeah. And... Um, I feel that education is the way that we can open the door to opportunity for the poor and the better off alike. Yeah. This is America. And we, we don't ask what people did before. We ask what they can do now. You're right. Now, uh, Vermonters earn 15% below the national average, and it's probably 25 or 30% if you take Chittenden County out. Unfortunately, Vermont is one of three states with shrinking household income. So, to me, the number one requirement for improving things and bringing clean business to our state is a ready pool of trained talent. So I'm for the creation of better paying jobs in Vermont through education business partnerships, which equip our young people with the skills needed to take those jobs and lower taxes to help business along. And I think in many ways, uh, this providing this kind of opportunity for people to care for themselves instead of looking to the government to care for them is really the old Vermont way. Mm -hmm. That's going to do it for our program this evening. I'd like to thank our guests tonight, the GOP candidates for the U.S. Senate, Jack McMullen and Fred Tuttle. I'm Bob Kinzel. Thank you for joining us, and have a good evening. Funding for Switchboard is provided by a major grant from the Lintelac Foundation. For a cassette copy of tonight's program, send $12 to Vermont Public Radio, 20 Troy Avenue, Colchester, Vermont, 05446. That's VPR, 20 Troy Avenue, Colchester, Vermont, 05446. Please include the date and subject of tonight's program. Switchboard is a production of Vermont Public Radio. When tis my Redeemer comes in glory on the resurrection morning fair, I'm going to take a ride. On the next Fresh Air, we conclude our Country Music Week with three performers who started their careers in family country music acts, Charlie Leuven, Charlie Hayden, and Betty Johnson. I'm Terry Gross. Join us for the next Fresh Air. That's coming up tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock on Vermont Public Radio. A reminder, we would like your comments on VPR programming, including Switchboard, All Things Considered, Morning Edition, and our music programming. You can call the Reaction Line at 802-654-4396 and leave a message. 
Email your comments to reactionline at vpr.net or mail your comments to reactionline Vermont Public Radio, 20 Troy Avenue, Colchester, 05446. We have support for programming this evening from Al Martin Volvo, now featuring the 1998 all-wheel drive Volvo and more than 65 years devoted to safety. Mark Estes of the Junction Frame Shop, offering custom picture framing and fine art in historic downtown White River Junction. And the Vermont Association of Realtors, providers of professional real estate services dedicated to education at and real property ownership. It's 8 o'clock from the Public Radio Center at historic 40th and Allen in Colchester. These are the stations of Vermont Public Radio, WVPR, 89.5 FM Windsor, WVPS 107.9 FM Burlington, and WRVT, 88.7 FM Rutland. We take you now to For Jazz in the Evening Tonight, a live broadcast from the 1998 Chicago Jazz Festival. Things are going to open up this evening with a live broadcast of McCoy Tyner, live from the Chicago Jazz Festival. McCoy Tyner just taking the stage. <laughs> 